I was searching for the best mind mapping software for a long time already, and I tested them all. Draw.io, MindMeister, MylerNode, MindChat, SimpleMind, iThoughts, MindNode, XMind, Mindly, LucidChart, Cardflow, Coggle and Graphio 4. The problem is, they all have one thing in common. Each of them lacks at least one feature that I need to be available in a mind mapping tool in order for me to use it on a daily basis. Here is what I need. Multi-device support for Windows, Mac and iPad Pro. I need collaboration and easy sharing capabilities. I need a web clipper. I need especially Apple Pencil support. Integration with other software like Evernote, Asana, Notion and <laughs> that's it sounds stupid maybe, but I need free positioning of my shapes because most of them don't allow me to position the shapes wherever I want. They have fixed layouts of their mind maps. After two years, I finally found a tool called Miro, formerly Realtime Bot, that provides all of these features and even more. It is not only a mind mapping tool, but a fully fledged project management tool if you like it to be. Doesn't need to be. In this video, however, I will only dive into its mind mapping capabilities. If you're interested in other features like its task and project management features, let me know in the comments below and I will cover this in another video. Let's start with the Apple Pencil support. I start with this because I made already a video about this where I went into detail how to use the Apple Pencil in Miro and how awesome it actually is. I know that apps like Graveview 4, they also support Apple Pencil and they're actually built for the Apple Pencil. However, it is not as intuitive and easy to use as it is for Miro. Next, let's talk about multi-device support. It's really important for me because I'm a Windows and Mac user, so I'm using both. And as you know, for the handwriting note-taking apps, we're already struggling to have something available on an iPad and also on an Android tablet or on Windows machine. Not for Miro, that's like Todoist, it's available on any platform. You can use it on Windows, Mac, iPad, iPhone and so on. And you have native apps and software for this as well. And they even have a web-based version. So if you're on any machine that doesn't support Miro, it doesn't matter, you can open it up in your browser and use it there. The good thing, how they implement it is that it looks, feels and works all the same on any of these devices. The next thing is free positioning of my shapes. In order to show you this, now let's dive into Miro and let's see how this looks like. So here we are in the Miro app in the Mac version of the app and if we go into the browser, you see it looks exactly the same. So let's just open up the productivity toolkit where I actually draw on some workflows, how I use the different apps and you see here when I open it here, it looks exactly the same. So. When we are already in here, I want to talk about the free positioning of my shapes. So that's what I just meant. I just can select any of these and drag it wherever I want it to be. And when we are in there, some awesome feature for presenting your things or adding additional information to this workflow, for example. So here's one example. I have no shelf button, but I also linked it to another information feature and linked it back to this one. So that's really nice to get additional information. That's really awesome. So just for example, I select Spark here. I copy the link. I use Evernote and say link to adding the, and paste the link, confirm, and that's it. As soon as I tap on here, it will zoom into the, the shape I just selected here. Isn't that awesome? If you want to go back, I just do it the other way around. I take this, copy the link, link to, confirm, and that's it. Now we are going here. So I think you can already imagine what great type of mind mapping maps you can do here because you have nearly an infinite canvas here that you can use to create these mind maps. And you always see here on the bottom right an overview of your mind map, okay? So you can always use this for navigation. So you see when I drag around on this mini map, um, we can navigate much easier inside our mind map. So this means you can really, as I made it here, put something somewhere 
and link it together that is related to this and you see this. So that's how you can make great relationships. And now let's talk about collaboration. So in order to show you this, I will open up the Miro app on my iPad Pro. And as soon as I open up this Miro app and I go into the dashboard, you will see a cursor appearing. So when I move around with my MacBook cursor, it is nearly, nearly in real time that I see the other person, which is me because I opened it twice, um, moving around. So just imagine that you have a colleague, a team member or whoever who wants to work on this dashboard with you, you would see in real time the mouse going on. On the other hand, when I use the pen here with my Apple Pencil and I start drawing something, you see it appears nearly in real time on my Mac as well. And you actually also see just quickly who created it. So Tom pops up there that it is me who created these shapes. You see uh, the auto creation of the shapes is selected. So uh, I showed you this in another video, as I mentioned before, how easy it is to create these mind maps. The good thing is about these shapes, I can always select a shape and change it into another form, like for example a post-it or the other way around from a post-it to this. So just write in here, test, and then you see it better what the differences are. And we can change it into a card and the cards are really the collaboration feature in Myro as well. I can select now a signee here. So this card is assigned to me. It could be a task in a Kanban board or whatever, but you also can use it inside a mind mapping tool. You can add a tag. You can open this up and add a description, which isn't shown in here. I have to open it up to get more details. However, you can just drag and draw this to make it bigger and then the description will appear as well. You can add links, you can add a due date. We also can go down here and then you see frames. Frames is also a really interesting thing. So let's say we want to put everything into a frame, this part. This means I can name this frame and this means that I can drag around the whole thing. It's like grouping, but it is much more because if you have frames, let's, let's make two different frames actually. I don't have to explain this much easier. And another frame, like this. We can go into presentation mode and it will start the presentation on your first frame and then you can go through the different frames. So isn't that awesome? So this also goes into full mode and you only see what is on your frame and then you can go to the next frame so you really can make slides out of your frames for the presentation mode in form of a mind map. So I think that's really awesome. But also you can go here and then you see all your frames so you can reorganize. It's like in PowerPoint or Keynotes where you have your slides here. So that's also to organize this. You can show it as a list or not. And I think that's awesome for collaboration and for sharing the information you want to have there. And it goes further. You can start a video chat in here start this. Now I will open up again the I Miro app on my iPad Pro. So just imagine that this would be your colleague seeing there. And then I see on the bottom here uh, an area where I can join this conversation. And as soon as I join this and I see here on my side that I can show the different watches. So it's twice the same. Obviously, I can screen share this now. So this will just share my screen and you will see on the iPad now that the screen will... You can minimize this, you can maximize your the screen and I can see now the other person working in this sheet. So if I go around here, you see how it is reflected on the other screen you are sharing with this and you can actually share this link to your board to anybody. 
They don't need to be uh, they don't need to be part of your team, but they would still see your presentation like this. So I think that's just awesome for collaboration. So there's so much more about collaboration, how you can do this. We also have a note section and so on, but the video would just become too long. I want to go back and focus more on the mind mapping features. So I want to show you now on the Mac how easy it is actually to create a mind map. So either you go to a template and you add uh, a pre-filled template. So that's something that you are used to see when you are using things like MindNode or whatever. However, the difference you see already that I can drag it around however I want it to be. Okay, and you also can change this as you are used to normal mind mapping. So if you prefer this way of mind mapping, you can use this as well. Okay, so that's the proper mind mapping features as you are used to it from the other mind mapping tools. However, as I said, I prefer to make freehand mind maps, which is for me just much easier to use. I can always do this and then I, you know, you can actually mind map whatever you want. I also like the different types of arrows I can use. I really can be creative to go around here. A problem as well in mind mapping tools that you cannot properly rearrange everything. We can also go, go like this, like this. And it's also still connected when I drag like this. So if I have two different arrows coming in, I can actually drag them around and you see two arrows coming in. I think if you're using mind mapping tools already, then you know what I'm talking about, that these are really limiting features uh, for me to create nice looking mind maps. You always can select them and group these things. So you always, when you select this part, I can drag it around. I can just ungroup and take only a part of it like this. And then I can drag it around and it stays connected. So that's really the flexibility I want a mind mapping tool be able to provide. It also provides a web clipper. So if you go here, and we just go to whatever page and then we use the my web clipper. We can use a selected area, for example, like this one, a bigger one and press save. And then now it's saved to Miro already. Okay, so it's like Milanode where you also have a web clipper available and it will take a preview of this and it takes the website actually and it will give you here the option when you hover over an image that you can save the image like this. So that's a really nice solution as well. However, I don't need this for Miro because as you've seen, and I have the option here then to upload files and there's the Chrome extension actually that I can put and you see all the saved images that I made before. And here's the one I had, I just tap on this and it will put it in here, you can resize the thing I can double click to crop the image. And again, I can just simply use this and make a connection to my mind map. I also have options like, you know, dotted line. I can change the thickness of the line, color, and so on. So that's really nice as well. Um, talking about web clipping. So we just imagine that we want to clip a website. Let's go to paperlessmovement.com. And we say that we want to tag Tom's cool toolkit where I show all the equipment I use in my paperless journey. I can just select the URL, copy paste it in here. And what it does then, it will import a preview of this. So that's really nice as well. So as soon as I import websites like this and do mind mapping again, we go up step further, we go to YouTube and let's say we want to clip a video. If you like, we just simply take this, copy paste it in here. And there we are, we have the video embedded without doing any code or whatever. And it is playable. If you like, I can put no. And I can connect it to my mind map. So I think you see now the flexibility we have here. 
We have, for example, margin notes, which also provides like video adding and so on. However, margin notes again is only available on the iPad. So here it will look exactly the same in all the devices like the iPhone, iPad, Windows, wherever. And you have this flexibility of your mind map. Isn't that awesome? And the big, big advantage using Miro compared to other mind mapping apps is the integration with other tools. If you have anything you want to have on there, you can add it. You just go to the App Store, which is only free. It's no apps, it's uh, integrations into Miro and it is free. There's no additional costs adding these features and you can choose things like Google Drive. So I can easily bring in my things like this or I can add, the, can add Slack. I also can integrate SAP here. So this means you can integrate it with any app you like with, with 10,000 of the other apps to bring things in. You can connect it to Trello, uh, Asana. So it's a native integration with Asana and it's a native integration with, with Notion. I mean, Notion doesn't even offer proper integration with other tools. However, Miro and Notion, they are compatible. So you can actually integrate Miro dashboards into Notion. Let me show how this looks like. Let's open up Notion that I'm using as well. If you want to, if you want me to make more videos about Notion, let me know as well. Let's just create an empty page. And now here you see when you put in Miro, it actually shows Miro. So Notion and Miro partnered up and you can add now Miro dashboards. And all you have to do is to share this and use this link. You may have to make it public and embed it in here. And now you will see it is here. Okay. So I have to press the button in order to load it. And there it is. We can go to full screen mode. We can navigate in here. However, things like this or the preview of the website isn't showing up. So you always can just simply tap on here and you go directly to your dashboard to have the full functionality. So I think that's pretty easy to do. Um, but still, you can have everything in your Notion wikis that you are building, like mind maps. Um, that is really a miss missing feature in Notion, Evernote and so on. Now I have the perfect connection between Notion and Miro. The thing is I could go on and on about talking about Miro and its advantages and really became a um, part of my setup. So if you like this video and you think that's an awesome thing, let me know in the comments below. I put the link to Myra into the description below. It's an affiliate link. So if you sign up via this link, you will support my channel. So thank you for this. I'm happy that I found another tool that really fits into my workflow and makes the things I'm using much more complete now. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and make sure that you ring the bell so you don't miss the next video about Miro, all the other productivity tools we will talk about in the future. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you up next time. <laughs>